Hey guys, Vlad here with ABT Astro. Tonight I've got a special treat for you guys, and that is the comparison of about as good of a doublet to about as good of a triplet APO as it gets. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, overall, over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And I love, love, love doing these type of equipment comparisons. Uh, they seem to be pretty popular too, so hopefully you enjoy this one. Alrighty, while it's still a beautiful day outside and it's not dark, let's kind of cover the equipment that we got going on. Uh, so, uh, if you guys are familiar with refractors, you guys are probably uh, know what these two are, uh, but let's cover them real quick. So, Astrophysics 130 GT, and this is the triplet that we got going on. Um, and then Takahashi FS-128. Uh, these are pretty widely considered to be, you know, like kind of like the cream of the crop in both the doublet and the triplet of APOs. Um, for the mount, we're using the Lismondi G11. And tonight, we're going to be doing uh, both a visual comparison on Jupiter, some double stars, high power on Vega, um, and hopefully I will take some images of the planets uh, and a few brighter stars so you guys could see how they stack up. Now I kind of wanted to uh, cover this subject, you know, just in general. This comes up on internet forums all the time. Whether a triplet is worth, the, you know, over a doublet for both visual and for astrophotography. So I figured, you know, I'd kind of give you my take on it. And hopefully, if you're trying to select between a doublet and a triplet, uh, it'll be beneficial for you guys. So anyhow, once it gets dark, we'll kind of start to do the comparison. Oh, hey guys, welcome back. As you can see, it's nighttime already. So I've got the um, FS-128 set up. I'm just kind of getting like a sense for how the scene is tonight. Um, it looks a little wavy out there. Um, the scopes, both of them have actually been outside for like around two hours already. I actually took them out of the sun after that initial clip, um, just to make sure they didn't heat up too much. Uh, so I'm going to let this, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of visual observing through the scope. I'm going to let this kind of settle down a little bit and I'm going to get into imaging. Uh, so again, I'm going to image Jupiter and then probably... Vega just to see if we could see a difference in secondary color and see if we could capture any difference in the detail uh, that each scope can produce. Uh, I highly doubt that tonight with you know with tonight's scene that there's going to be any you know real difference in uh, in uh, what we could capture of actual data that'll you know separate one scope from the other on Jupiter. Uh, but I am kind of curious though, I'm actually going to take a picture of uh, Vega with both of the scopes uh, with the Barlow lens because I want to see what the difference is in secondary color. Alrighty guys, quick update. So I kind of gave up on trying to image the planets. Um, scene is just not really good enough today. I will talk about uh, the views and the scopes of those. These scopes are really not planetary imaging monsters, anyhow. But anyhow, so I've got the scope. Uh, the, this is the FS-128 uh, doublet focused on um, uh, Vega right now, right? And I don't know how well this is showing. I think it's showing up a little better from this angle here. Um, so yeah, and I'll post the snapshot that I already took of it into the video. As you can see, there's definitely some chromatic aberration showing up, right? This is just the camera. There's uh, no Barlow or anything like that. Uh, the Barlow deal there, that's not the actual Barlow. I took out the optical element, so that's just like an extension tube is what that's acting as. But yeah. As you can see, for astrophotography, even a very good fluoride doublet will show some chromatic aberration. So now I'm going to switch over to uh, uh, 
to the astrophysics out there that's uh, been a very well cooled down and uh, we'll do the same thing with it and we'll kind of see if, if there's any chromatic aberration and by the way if you're not familiar with what chrom chromatic aberrations it's that purple that's kind of around the star we'll see how that looks with uh, with that scope Alrighty guys, so the 130GT pointed at Vega, same exact setup, no barlow, that's just a hollow tube. And let's see. So again, I'll post a, um, a screenshot of this. Um, there is a very minute amount of purple around the star with the triplet. I just can't surprise that there's any color but there is a little bit that's showing up here um, and then also I will post a side-by-side -side of the two stars for you guys. Alright guys so um, I've been doing some visual observing with the two scopes and um, you know the views are more similar than different visual is kind of like you know the best way that I can kind of summarize it. Um, but anyhow, I'll see you guys the next morning. We'll kind of, you know, come to a conclusion of what I think, you know, of, uh, how a doublet stacks up to a, to a triplet telescope. Alrighty, ladies and germs, welcome back inside. So for my constant viewers, for my subscribers, one of your guys' is kind of, you know, nudges for me was uh, to get a better microphone. So I invested in a road. Uh, uh, wireless mic so hopefully the audio quality will be better now anyhow getting back to the topic um so what's the deal between a doublet and a triplet apo which one should you go with well you know there just like with uh, anything in life right <laughs> there isn't too uh there isn't like a very clear answer to it uh, but I wanted to kind of, you know, give you guys some ideas of what situations a double is perfectly fine for and what situations you'd actually want to go with the triplet for or with, uh, right? Um, so anyway, so I'm going to post the image that's comparing the two, uh, the two shots that I took of Vega with the FS120, which is again one of the best doublets ever made, and, you know, like ever basically, and with the... Um, astrophysics which is one of the best triplets ever made uh, and right now um, and as you can see um, there is a difference but um, you know both of them both of the scopes realistically they do show a little bit of secondary color right the FS120 does show more secondary color than uh, the astrophysics uh, the 130GT uh, but, you know, I mean, I guess the moral of the story here is uh, that even if you have a really good triplet, you know, on some stuff, it's still going to show a little bit of secondary color. And I, I'd say even visually that is true. Um, it, the, the difference visually would be that um, with the doublet, right? you're gonna be at a much lower power to where you see that secondary color compared to a triplet. In fact, with the FS120, when I was observing um, Vega the other night, you know, when I was uh, shooting the video out, uh, out outside, um, you know, quite frank, I was using the batter zoom. Quite frankly, uh, anything above the 20 millimeter setting, uh, which gives you about 50x or so with that scope, I was actually able to pretty easily see, you know, secondary color on Vega with that scope. Um, with the triplet, you know, I usually have to be like around 50, 150x or higher to, you know, start to like, you know, detect a little bit of secondary color. Now I will say visually, 
uh, everybody's eyes are different. So my eyes, you know, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty sensitive to secondary colors, especially to like blue and purple. Uh, so I probably see secondary color more than, you know, other people would. I mean, you know, I can't count the number of times to where people post, you know, they've got like, you know, some kind of, <laughs> on internet forums, I mean, they've got some kind of Takahashi doublet, right? And they, you know, they could swear that there are like, you know, like 9 million X and they don't see like a hint of secondary color. Um, for me, that is just simply not true, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, they're great scopes, but, you know, especially if you got it pointed at a really tough uh, subject like Vega. I mean, you know, my FS120, which again, which is one of the best doublets, you know, because it's a fluoride doublet. I mean, it's about as, you know, as currently as, as good of a glass as you can make, right? You know, it still shows, um, let's say, a decent amount of secondary color um, on those really bright stars. Now... To kind of um, kind of get get away from the bright stars, you know, I um, actually that same night I took a look at the nub um, and a couple of other like the double double, you know, I looked at a couple of brighter um, uh, double stars, and you know, um, even with the FS one twenty eight with the double, I really couldn't see too much secondary color, you know, even with the uh, batter zoom at the eight millimeter setting. So, um, it's, it's visually, if you have a really good doublet, unless you're like really into staring at Vega, you're not going to see too much secondary color. All right. So anyway, to kind of expand beyond, you know, double stars or like observing bright stars, um, you know, how do the planets look like in a good, uh, doublet versus a good triplet? Well, you know, I looked at Jupiter, which is, you know, about as high in the sky as it's going to get in, you know, 2021 um, on that night. And the scene, unfortunately, was pretty terrible. That's why I didn't even bother doing, you know, like a picture of it. But, uh, you know, address or assessing the amount of secondary color is perfectly fine, though, even under those conditions. You know, it really didn't matter too too much how high of power that I got. You know, I, I probably got up to like, I don't know, around 250 eggs. I didn't see an objectable amount of secondary color, so a doublet for the planets is perfectly fine visually. Um, so, you know, so uh, you, you might, can, you, you're kind of getting the sense that maybe, you know, a doublet's not too bad, right? Like, you know, why would anybody ever want to buy a triplet? Well, if you are doing astrophotography, that's where the big difference is going to come in. Um, uh, a triplet is going to, I mean, just physically, uh, by the laws of physics, you need three lenses to converge all three wavelengths of the light uh, and produce a good, you know, color-free image. So, um, astronomy cameras, they're incredibly sensitive to that. So, that's where the big difference is going to be is uh, if you're doing astrophotography, you know, you probably should really be looking into a triplet unless you're like on a really tight budget. Um, a triplet is really the way to go. Uh, so that's the big thing. Um, now kind of, you know, besides the color correction factor, you know, what are some other differences between a doublet and a triplet, you know, APO refractor? Uh, weight is uh, one of them. I mean, you you know, you, you wouldn't figure, but you know, that chunk of glass, right? Like in, in the scopes that we're comparing, there are five inch scope, that five inch round, you know, chunk of glass. I mean, it weighs a significant amount. So the triplet is going to be heavier. Uh, the other downside to having three lenses instead of two is that the cool down is going to be a lot longer on them. Um, I would say probably at least half an hour longer with the five inch scope. Uh, so, if, you know, if you're one of those people that's, uh, you know, kind of short on time, you're, you know, you're visual and you want to go out for a quick look. If you get a really good doublet, you know, uh, we're talking about the FPL uh, 53 glass or fluoride or something like that, like the Takahashi's have. Um, you're probably visually not going to see too much of a difference between a doublet and a triplet anyhow, and you're, you're probably going to be happier with the doublet. Um, assuming you're using powers, you know, you, like if you live in an area kind of like where I live, where you're using powers of 200 extra below, 
I don't think you're really going to notice too much secondary color on most objects. Again, unless you're into staring at Vega for extended periods of time, then you, you definitely, you know, probably will see secondary color. Um, so yeah, for visual use, you know, it's, it's lighter, it cools down faster. Uh, the other thing too is that the, um, the center of balance on the triplet, on, on some triplets especially, is really, you know, it's kind of forward heavy, so the rings would almost be like right here, you know. And visually, I mean, to me, I'm kind of weird, like I like the aesthetics of the scope, right? So to me, it kind of looks weird. So, um, yeah, so, so, you know, like with some triplets, you know, because the, there's so much of the way it's here, you know, you've got to have it like kind of balanced, you know, kind of almost asymmetrically. Um, I like my scope to be balanced, you know, kind of like this thing right here, right? Even though this is a triplet, right, the dew shield on this expands, and when you expand it all the way, um, you know, it's roughly symmetrical is where the rings will be, so I kind of like it that way. Um, it's kind of a personal preference. All right, now to kind of sum it up and bring the ship home, um, in what situations do you want a doublet? A good doublet. You know, if you get in like, like one of those super entry-level doublets, this, you know, this probably doesn't apply. Uh, but if you get a good doublet, uh, for visual use, you're into quick looks with your scope. Uh, maybe you're just on a super tight budget and you, you know, the triplet is just not in your books. A doublet will work, especially with a smaller scope, like a 60 millimeter or something like that. You know, I, I wouldn't hesitate too much to get a doublet just to start out in astrophotography. Uh, in which situation do you want a triplet? You know, you're one of those people that's just kind of wants the ultimate performance. You know, even if you're visual, you just want the ultimate performance. You want to be sure that you're getting the best image possible. You want a triplet. Um, if you're doing astrophotography, you're a serious astrophotographer. I mean, most, you know, people that are seriously into astrophotography that are using a refractor to shoot, I mean, they've got a triplet going on. So for that, you know, you definitely want the triplet. It does make a difference because those CMOS cameras, they're hypersensitive to that secondary color. As you saw in the, you know, comparison image that we took, even the triplet, you know, will show some secondary color, right? So if you have a doublet, you know, it'll just show it even more. So um, anyhow, hopefully you guys found this information helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. Um, if you guys are not subscribed, again, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.